We'll continue with our review uh, for problem number 40. This is a formula problem and they have to tell us which variable to solve for. So they're telling us solve for r. That means we want to isolate the r. Don't be thrown by the exponent here. It's not going to matter. All right, so we want to isolate the r. We work on that side. So we are on the right hand side with the r term. Anything that is added or subtracted to the r term should come off first. So your 10 is going to come off. It's added, so you are going to take it away. So you're going to subtract 10 from both sides. Horizontal notation works better with the formulas than vertical because you're not going to have like terms. So we've subtracted 10. We'll clean up. So that P minus 10 equals I squared R. Go back on the side of the variable that you want. So you want the r. You're back over here. r is multiplied by the i squared. So to get the i squared off, you're going to divide it out. So we're going to divide on both sides by the i squared. We'll cancel. On the left hand side, you're just going to leave it. It's okay that it's a fraction and it looks a little weird. R is isolated. That was our goal. For our next formula, it has a fraction. That's the difference. And so we're going to solve for B. The first thing you should always do is clear out that fraction. So our common denominator is going to be a 2. You're clearing it just like regular equations. You're going to use that common denominator, multiply by both sides. So we're going to do a 2 on the left and then a 2 on the right. The 2 on the left is going to stay. On the right, the 2 is going to cancel out the half and multiply together to give you 1 there. That will clear your fraction. Now it's a normal formula solving problem. Go back and look what you're trying to isolate. You're looking for the B. Go on the side with the B. Whatever else is there is what you want to get rid of. So we want to get rid of the H. They are multiplied, so we will divide by the piece we don't want. We don't want the H. There is nothing you can do on the left. These are not like terms. Nothing we can cancel out, so it's okay to have a fraction. B is isolated. That was our goal. Our next formula, we're going to solve for W, and this one has a parentheses. Anytime you have a formula with a parentheses, you have to stop and ask yourself, is the variable you want on the inside or the outside? If it is inside, you will distribute like normal. So W is inside, so we will go ahead and distribute to get it out of the parentheses. So we'll distribute the B, so we're going to have 3B plus 2BW equals 25. Now you're trying to get to the W term, so go on that side. Anything added or subtracted to that term should come off first. So your 3B is going to come off first. You want the whole thing to cancel, so you need to subtract a 3B from both sides. And you should put it after the 25 on the right so that you don't mess up a sign. So the 3B cancels on the left. We're cleaning up. We have 2BW equals 25 minus 3B. We are still trying to isolate the W. So go back on this side with the W. You can get rid of the 2 and the B at the same time. They're both multiplied by the W. So you will divide by the ones you don't want, 2B. Both sides clean up. That isolates your W on the left. You are not allowed to divide out the B's on the right because there is a sign between your terms. You can only divide out parts when it's a product. 
a multiplication. So you cannot take a piece off of that numerator. So we're going to leave it. Our W is isolated. That was our goal. We have the same letters in this formula, except this time we're going to solve for B. And with the parentheses you check inside or outside, this time the B is outside. If it is outside, do not distribute. That would get your B in two places and then you'd be stuck. So do not distribute. So we'll have a look at it. We're trying to get to B. If you look at B, you notice it's multiplied by the parentheses. How do you reverse a multiplication? You do a division. So we can actually go ahead and divide all in one chunk this 3 plus 2w on both sides. This is gone. B is isolated. This one is actually easier than if we were solving for one that was on the inside. Our next formula has subscripts. The subscripts really have nothing to do with the math. Um, V2 and V1, you're going to treat them as if they were totally different, like an X and a Y. Sometimes that is used in science when you have things that are similar or things you're measuring two times, something like that. But um, as far as we're concerned to isolate, um, we're going to treat them just like as if they were an X and a Y, totally different. So don't worry about the subscripts. We have to clear a fraction on this one. Common denominator is going to be a T, so we need to take care of that first. Multiply on both sides by T. Doesn't matter if you write T A or if you write A T. Multiply on both sides by T. On the right hand side it's going to clear out that fraction. So we have T A equals V2 minus V1. Now, you're trying to isolate V2. So go on the side with the V2. That means you don't want the V1. It's subtracted, so we should add to both sides. So we have TA plus V1. And on this side, when you add, it's going to cancel. TA plus V1 is equal to V2. If in your answer you have AT plus V1 equals V2, that's fine. If you have V1 plus AT or V1 plus TA, that's also fine. But V2 is isolated. That's the goal. Our next question switches gears a little bit. Um, so it says, which number systems contain negative 2? And you don't have to memorize the list of number systems. You just have to know uh, what they are. I'll put the list there. And so we will just run through the list. So first of all, is negative 2 a natural number? It is not because the natural numbers start at 1 and go up. So no negatives there. Uh, it is also not a whole number because it is negative. Our next set, integers. Uh, negative 2 is an integer. Remember the integers uh, are positives and negatives. So we're okay with integers. After integers, we have a rational number. Rationals are any numbers that could be written as a fraction. We could put negative 2 over 1, so it is rational. If it is rational, it cannot be irrational. Irrationals are those numbers like pi or square root of 2, decimals that continue forever. So um, they don't repeat in a pattern or they don't terminate. But if it's rational, it cannot be irrational. And our last number set is the real numbers, which is the big system. And all of the numbers we deal with belong in that. So those are our three number systems that negative 2 belongs in. Next, we're back to what looks like a regular equation. We have an equal symbol. So we'll go ahead and we'll simplify on the right-hand side, distribute the 3. So we keep our 3x plus 1 on the left, bring our equals down. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times minus 2 is a minus 6, parentheses comes off. Then you should notice that you have x on both sides. You're going to get rid of an x term, so we'll have to subtract a 3x.
do it from both sides. But what you will notice is, whoops, your variable canceled. You don't have a variable anymore and you're trying to solve for the variable. When this happens, what you care about is did you get a true statement or a false statement? We ended up with a false statement. One does not equal negative six. So for this equation, there is no answer. It is going to be no solution. It will never be true. This one is called a contradiction. Your answer to it is no solution. We have another equation here that looks like a perfectly normal equation with an equals. And so we'll go ahead and simplify. Uh, staying on the left, we can put these like terms together. 3x plus 2x is 5x minus 4. On the right hand side, we have some like terms. Minus 3 and the minus 1, they can go together. So we have 5x minus 4. As you get more experienced, you would notice right there those sides are just alike. Uh, so this one is going to give us a special solution. Um, let's go ahead and go through the steps. We do have a variable term on both sides. Our next step is subtract your 5x from both sides. But when you do, your variable cancels. So once your variable cancels, what you care about on this kind is did you get a true statement or a false statement? This time we have a true statement. Our answer to the question is going to be all real numbers. Anything we put into this would make it true. We could choose any number out of the blue, plug it in, and it would work. This is called the identity.